Good morning and welcome to the Rockfort Therapeutics PLC introductory investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Dr. Greta Robertson, Chief Scientific Officer, and Stephen West, Executive Chairman. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve West. I am the co-founder and uh, chairman of Rockfort Therapeutics. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant with over 26 years of experience uh, working with companies, uh, predominantly with growth companies, and I know the public market sphere very well. Um, and I'll just pass you over quickly to Graham just to give you a bit of background on himself before we dive into the presentation. Hey, yeah, I'm Dr. Graham Robertson. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer um, of Luramid um, that was recently acquired by Rockford. I've been connected with the Midkine program uh, to develop drugs targeting Midkine uh, since 2015 and oversaw the transition uh, from an original Sydney-based company into the Rockford London-based entity. Um, so back to you, Steve. Thanks, Graham. So diving straight in, disclaimer, we'll skip over that. Uh, I can read that at your leisure. Uh, but as an introduction to the company, so we are a UK biotech company. We're listed on the, on the London main market and the ticket code is ROQ. We actually listed as a cash shell back in March last year. Uh, and then we acquired a company called Liramid in December last year. And so we, we've now transitioned into a, into a fully fledged biotech company. We, our business is developing drugs through the preclinical phase. And then the idea is to, to partner with uh, or sell to Big Pharma. And we fully funded for that, that process. So at the moment, we are focused on a novel uh, target called Midkine. Uh, and it's all about knocking out Midkine out of the system. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail as we go through the slide pack. But we are utilizing RNA therapeutic drugs uh, for this drug development phase. So uh, moving away from traditional antibody style drugs. Now, uh, potential treatments uh, for, for midkine inhibition is quite far reaching. So it includes cancer, chronic inf inflammatory disease, autoimmunity and COVID-19. And these are all significant drug markets. You're talking multiple billions of dollars. I mean, a cancer alone is $160 billion. Um, so our, our focus, funnily enough, is, is cancer. Uh, one reason is the lucrative market that presents itself, but it's also it's the quickest target for us to get into the clinic. So we are specifically looking at developing drugs, RNA therapeutic style drugs, to reduce midkine levels in human in human tumours. Uh, and then, in addition to that, we're also looking at improving cancer immunotherapy responses. Um, so we'll go into more detail about these specific items later on. Uh, in terms of the timetable, we have a very aggressive timetable. So we're looking at getting drugs into clinical trials by 2023. And as we go along that journey and to deliver that mile, that key milestone, there'll be lots of key value, value inflection points along the way. So as an investor, that's going to translate to lots of news flow during the rest of 2022 and into 2023. So if we move into the investment case, so... Um, there's quite a bit here, um, but essentially we're, we're fully funded. So we did a fundraise in December last year. We raised three million pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot for a biotech company, but it, it is enough for us to uh, deliver on the milestones that we've set out. And the reason is, is because we're utilizing a new drug style called RNA therapeutics rather than anti antibody style drugs. And uh, we're looking at getting, as I said, drugs into clinic by 2023. And we're doing that by working with world-class scientists. So you've met Graham briefly, virtually. He's a world-class expert in Midkine. We also uh, have a recent addition to the company as an advisor to the board in Professor Trevor Jones. He is an industry veteran. He's got over 45 years experience. He, he was on the R&D. Uh, he was, was a main board member for R&D for the Wellcome Trust uh, for a number of years. He was also involved as an NED with Allergen, a $65 billion company. And he is an advisor to the government on, on health issues, including COVID-19 at the moment. So to have someone like that involved is, is, is amazing, actually. Uh, and I think it validates we, we, we're, on, we're onto something here. Uh, we also have collaborations with a number of medical research institutes. Uh, and specifically, we have one 
with the Murdoch University in Australia and Professor Steve Wilson, who is a, a pioneer of the, the, the specific style of drug that we're developing. And he's actually taken that style of drug into patients. So that, that's very important. Uh, the, the disease target we're, we're targeting is midkine, as I mentioned, and it's all about knocking midkine out of the system. It's actually a, a novel disease target. So there's no drugs uh, in the market targeting this disease target. Um, so, and we, we hold the glo a global IP portfolio um, around that, which protects uh, that disease target as well. So that's incredibly lucrative. Um, and as I mentioned, we're, we're developing drugs uh, through the RNA therapeutic style. So it's quicker and cheaper. I mean, a, a perfect example is the mRNA vaccines that, that hit the markets a couple of, you know, a year, year back or so. The speed at which they were developed was phen phenomenal. Um, and so we, we're utilizing that same style of, of technology. Uh, the disease targets, I mean, there's lots of disease targets that we, we can target. They're all very lucrative. They're all tens of billions, up to $100 billion market sizes. We are specifically, we're specifically chosen cancer for our first indication for clinical trials. Uh, the cancer market's about $160 billion, uh, And then a subset of that is immunotherapy, which is about $75 billion. So they're the markets that we're, we're targeting for our first, our first target. Uh, and in terms of uh, where we are now, our market cap is sub seven million pounds. So it is a fraction of the potential value here. So we, we see um, our job is as hitting these milestones and delivering value over the next 12 to 18 months. And uh, it, it should be a significant increase in share price, I would hope that we can uh, deliver on these milestones. We have good liquidity, 57% uh, free float and only just under 72 million shares on issue. So very tightly held share base, which uh, I think sets us up well for, uh, for good news when, when we do release that into the market. Uh, and finally, I think the most important point for us is the management is very well incentivized. So the directors hold uh, about 12% of the shares on issue and uh, management also hold uh, warrants as well to make sure they're rewarded as we deliver on these milestones. Now, moving on to the board and management team, I, I'm not going to go through everyone here and I've, I've introduced myself. Graham's introduced himself just to re-emphasize he is a world-class e expert in MidKind. So Graham is driving this process for us. I've mentioned Professor Trevor Jones, who is, is an amazing addition to the company. And he's, the, the fact he's decided to join us on this journey uh, is, as I said, I think a validation that we're doing the right thing here. Uh, and then on, in terms of the non-exec directors, they're set out there. I think the one to mention there is Dr. Michael Stein. He's a commercial, commercially minded scientist uh, and he's been involved in, in a number of startups as well. So he, he's, uh, he's a very important part of the management team as well. So moving on to midkind. So I've mentioned the word midkind a number of times here. And um, I guess the question on lots of people's lips is what is midkind? So I want to sort of describe it in a very basic way here. Um, so if we look at this slide here, MidKind is a growth factor protein. It's abundant in embryos. It helps the embryo form into the human body. So it's an essential part of that process. Uh, at birth, it's switched off effectively. Uh, and in healthy adults, it's barely detectable. So it sort of sits there in the background. However, what we've proven through over 10 years of research and over $40 million of investment We've proven that in a number of disease processes, it increases dramatically. And we've also proven if you can knock out midkine or inhibit midkine in these disease processes, the body responds a lot more positively to those diseases. And, and uh, there's ex examples as we work our way through, we can see this visually, specifically with tumors. So our whole business is all about knocking out midkine and delivering drugs to do that. So I'll pass it over to Graham now just to go through a bit more of the science. Thanks, Steve. Um, so you can see here the squeal in the middle. That's essentially the midkind protein. Um, and that's just a scientific diagrammatic way of representing it. The key take home message from here, from, from this slide, is that midkind impacts on many different disease processes. Um, and so on, on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see that uh, it, it impacts on cancer immunotherapy resistance and response. So these are the big blockbuster new drugs uh, that are underpinning 
a whole generation of uh, uh, cancer treatments based on essentially switching back on the immune system. The problem there is that about half of all melanoma patients and up to 90% in other tumour types of patients just don't respond to these U-but new generation uh, immunotherapy drugs. However, it's been demonstrated very clearly that midkine essentially blocks the body's immune system from um, targeting the, the, the tumour, from attacking the tumour. It, it essentially derails the normal body's immune responses. And blocking midkine stops that process. So that's why we feel that cancer is one of our best opportunities and, in, and, in, and specifically to overcome the, the immunotherapy resistance exhibited by a lot of cancer patients. Um, on top of that, it's been shown that midkine drives tumour metastasis. So this is the process whereby a primary tumour spreads around to other organs in the body, and it's usually the metastases that are fatal. So combined, these are two major areas of cancer biology that midkine can impact on. I won't go through all the details of the rest of them because our main focus is cancer, but just on the left-hand side, these inflammatory responses, fibrosis and autoimmunity in show how midkine impinges on critical disease processes, again, driving pro-inflammatory responses that underpin many significant diseases. Um, and fibrosis is another very common area linked to inflammatory responses. Autoimmunity, such as multiple sclerosis or lupus, Midkine has also been shown to be on the scene of the crime and drive these processes. So therefore, Midkine affords a huge opportunity beyond just cancer, but that's our main focus initially. And so as Steve alluded to earlier, over 10 years of research by uh, Liramid and its precursor companies and a large investment on our part and a lot of academic groups around the world have shown that if you block midkine in a whole range of different um, uh, diseases, including cancer and cancer immunotherapy resistance, you, your, the, your um, progression of the disease is slowed, you can overcome the resistance to treatment in cancer and you get huge benefit. So that's why we think that midkine is a key player in a whole lot of these different diseases and therefore blocking it will be an advantage. Now, just to focus in on um, cancer, this is one excellent example of how blocking midkine has been of benefit. This is a mouse tumour model in which, uh, if you can see the ugly bits of tissue there uh, in, in the diagram, uh, actually uh, human brain tumours grown in mice. And this is the way they usually grow in the presence of what we call full-length midkine. So that's normal midkine. However, when we introduce a shortened form of midkine, which in, effectively interferes with normal midkine, you can see that there's a massive reduction in tumour growth. The tumours essentially uh, stop growing and fade away. So this shows that blocking midkine in this particularly nasty, insidious form of brain cancer called neuroblastoma um, can be effective. And as we said before on the previous slide, midkine contributes to, is, is the underlying cause of critical tumour processes that rewires the tumour microenvironment and that leads to immunotherapy resistance. So these are the major drugs, Keytruda, Optivo and so forth that have really revolutionised cancer treatment. But I stress again, only a proportion of patients get benefit. Metastasis, critically important. Midkine drives metastasis. And also there are various other aspects of tumour biology that midkine has been shown to be involved in. I won't go into the details of them, but in, in summary, if we can block midkine and get um, at least an improvement in, in uh, immunotherapy response, but any of these other aspects, then there'll be a massive benefit for patients. So we feel that the targeted delivery of a midkine drug, and this is based on these new oligonucleotide RNA uh, therapeutics, 
if we can introduce a medkine oligonucleotide drug into cancer patients, it will represent a very novel anti-cancer treatment strategy and especially overcoming immunotherapy resistance. And that is ultimately currently the uh, holy grail of cancer treatments. So I'll pass the slide back to Steve to pick up from here. Thanks, Graham. So uh, we're currently in the preclinical drug discovery phase. Uh, and as I mentioned, we've got the largest global patent portfolio on Midkind. So that, that's protecting some of the work that we're doing and provides a, a platform to develop these first in class drugs that we're developing in order to inhibit Midkind. Um, so what we are doing at the moment is a specific style of RNA therapeutic drug. It's called an antisense oligonucleotide. I've mentioned uh, Professor Steve Wilton at Murdoch University. He's a pioneer uh, in, in this type of uh, drug development and certainly a world-class expert in this field. So we're able to utilise Steve Wilton and his team at Murdoch University. And with their team, we've successfully designed and selected drug uh, lead drug targets or candidates. Uh, we've, already, we've already carried out some in, vitro, uh, some in vitro testing of these lead drug candidates on human cancer cells. The, the results have been very positive and in line with our initial expectations before we carried out the tests. And this has led to us lodging a new patent, um, composition of matter patent, it's called. Uh, and that's in order to protect this work that we've done in developing this new, this new style of drug. Uh, and that was announced uh, earlier this week. Uh, so that's an important milestone for us. And now it's all about moving on to a specific uh, target. Uh, we, and that target that we mentioned a few times now is cancer. So it's cancer and it's also a subset of that, which is immunotherapy. Um, so it's all about testing the drug candidate's efficacy in altering the human, uh, the human tumor cell behavior. Uh, and we do this through in vivo experiments in mouse cancer models. And uh, in addition, we're, well, in conjunction with that, we are uh, entering into some collaborations with some leading medical research institutes that specialize in specific types of tumors that we're, we're targeting. And they also specialize in cancer immunotherapy. And as you can imagine, some of these medical research institutes in Australia are, are leaders in their field, um, having, you know, especially uh, melanoma being so prevalent down in Australia. So um, that's, that's essentially what we've achieved to date and where, what our next steps are. Uh, and we're incredibly excited with the results so far. So in terms of the work that needs to be undertaken, I'm not gonna uh, run you through every single milestone here, but what, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is uh, we only started this process in Q4 last year. So we've, we've achieved an incredible amount here in, in such a short period of time. So to date, we have uh, worked with a, a, a world-class leader in the specific style of, uh, style of drug, the um, antisense oligonucleotide, and we've developed uh, some lead drug con compounds. We've done our initial in vitro optimization and screening and testing. The results have been very, very positive. Uh, we've done our PMO drug production, uh, and now we've lodged our composition of matter patents, uh, which we announced, announced on Monday. So now we're move, moving into cancer cell-based and in vivo efficacy testing. So that, that's going to be done with uh, Murdoch University and also with the collaborations with some other medical research institutes as well. Uh, and then below that, you can see the other steps that we need to undertake over the next sort of six to 12 months, which will get us uh, to deliver a drug into clinical trials by 2023. So it's a very, it is a very aggressive um, uh, timeline. Time we acknowledge that, but um, we think it is achievable. And I think what we've achieved to date demonstrates that we can achieve a lot over a short period of time. And what this translates to as, a, as an investor uh, is a couple of things. One is news flow along the way. So we do hope to be able to demonstrate to the market, market our progress as we work our, th our way through this and the different value inflection points. But I think the, you know, at the end of the day, if we can deliver a drug into clinical trials in 2023. That's a huge value inflection point. Uh, and I'll go through that in a minute, but um, you're talking billions of dollars if we, if we can get to that, that point. So in terms of market and exit, exit potential, so um, we've mentioned that Mikine has been proven to be linked to lots of different disease settings. So cancer, anti-inflammatory, autoimmune, COVID-19, they're all huge markets. Uh, cancer alone is, is actually $160 billion, but a subset of that is cancer immunotherapy, which is $75 billion. 
So that's our target uh, for getting our first drug into the clinic. Uh, and the reason is obviously it's a lucrative market, but it's, it's, it's the quickest uh, drug target to get into the market in, into clinical trials as well. So um, that's why we've chosen, chosen cancer. Now, uh, the idea here is to get into clinical trials and then either partner or sell out to Big Pharma. So we see that as being a, an achievable event in 2023. And just as an example of other companies that have managed to achieve this, if you look at um, sort of the two, the two examples I've, I've given here on the slide, the reason I've chosen these examples are twofold. One is it's a similar type of style of drug that they, these guys have developed. Uh, and they're also at the same kind of stage as what we see ourselves being at later this year. So if you look at Malik Crod acquiring Silence, that was a $2.1 billion deal size, and Genetech uh, acquiring Skyhawk, a uh, $2 billion deal size. So this is, this is what we're aiming for. This is our whole business model, is to develop drugs, get it into clinic, and partner with Big Pharma like these other, other companies have done here. So in summary, um, we are a market leader in Midcon. Uh, we hold the, the, the largest global IP portfolio about around Midcon. And we, our business at the moment is all about developing RNA therapeutic drugs to inhibit Midcon. Uh, and we see significant growth potential uh, in, the, in the markets that we, that we can penetrate. So, and the reason being, it's, it's a novel disease target. As I mentioned, there's no drugs in the market targeting Midcon. So it's an open playing field for us. Uh, and then in terms of the drug markets, we're looking to penetrate, uh, again, you know, big numbers, tens of billions, up to 100, 100 billion, hundreds of billions in market size. So we can get, get a slice of that. It's going to be incredibly lucrative. The specific style of drug we're, we're developing, RNA therapeutics, it's faster. So as demonstrated by the mRNA uh, uh, COVID vaccines, that's a lot more cost effective than the traditional antibody approach. And that's why we can compete as a small company in, in, this, in this market. Um, and our business model, which we think is very strong, allows value creation at a very early stage. So we're only talking, you know, till 2023, where we hit our, our huge milestone with lots of little mini, mini milestones along the way. And um, as I just went through, there's, there's a couple of examples of significant exits um, when, when companies get to that stage. So we are in preclinical with drug discovery, as I mentioned. Uh, the results have been highly encouraging. We're incredibly excited uh, with where we are in terms of the journey so far. We are fully funded. Um, and it's worth mentioning as well, we do get a 42.5% cash rebate on all our R&D expenditure as well. So that certainly helps. Uh, and we are looking at, uh, at uh, potential government grants as well to help the funding as well. So fully funded, uh, there's no, no problem there. And our job is all about unlocking significant value that we see in the acquisition of Liramid and the uh, business model of creating mid-kind inhibiting drugs. So that's, that concludes our presentation. So I'll hand it back to um, Alessandro now. Stephen, Graham, thank you very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated in the top right-hand corner of your screen. But just while Stephen and Graham take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Stephen Graham, as you can see, we've received a number of questions throughout today's presentation, and thank you to all the investors for submitting those. Could ask you to please read out the questions and give responses where it's appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you both at the end. Sure, great. Okay, thanks, Alessandra. Uh, and thanks everyone for your time for, for listening, us, listening to our presentation. Uh, so we've got a, got a number of questions here. I'll, I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. So the first one we have here is what attracted you to Midkind and the opportunity? So there's a number of things that, number of things that attract us to Midkind. Um, and I, so I think the first thing is it was early stage. Um, there was significant unrealized value. Um, in the, in the business that Liramid was, was running. So Liramid is the company we acquired that held, held the, the Midcon business. Uh, Liramid held the largest IP for, portfolio around Mid, Midcon. So there was a lot of value there and, and protection around the work that had been done. And I think the most exciting thing is it, it's a novel disease target. So as I've said a couple of times now, there's no drugs in the market targeting Midcon. 
So it is an open playing field for us. And it, it's around a target where the causal effect has already been proven through extensive research. So lots of money spent, lots of time spent, and lots of publications in independent third-party journals, over a thousand, I think. Um, so it's, it's a proven science, and it's all about getting the drugs into the body to, uh, to knock out midkind now. And if we can do that, we've got a very successful business here. Um, and I think that the final thing to note as well with Mikan is we're able to utilize uh, the new technology around RNA therapeutic drugs as well. So we get into the market a lot quicker and cheaper and we can compete in this market as well. Uh, next question is, what kind of collaborations are you pursuing? Would you partner with Big Pharma in the preclinical stage? Um, good question. Uh, yeah, so we, we've already got a collaboration with Murdoch University, which I've mentioned. Uh, and that's kind of been key to us uh, developing our drug lead drug uh, candidates. Uh, we are looking at entering into a couple of other collaborations at the moment, and that's to support our next stage of the drug discovery, which is around testing specific types of uh, tumours and uh, immunotherapy. So we'll be entering those hopefully quite soon. Um, and yeah, if, if, we're, if we were happened to be approached by Big Pharma, we'd certainly engage with them. Um, as I've said a couple of times, that's our, our end goal is to engage with Big Pharma um, you know, next year. Um, I think yeah, one more. So why has no Big Pharma entered the space? Uh, good question. I think you know, it's one of those things where Big Pharma kind of sits back and it lets the smaller companies undertake uh, the more risky early stage development and they sit back and watch, and if it's successful, they come in and swoop and they buy it up or they or they, or they partner with, with that company. And that fits very nicely with our business model. So we're, we're very happy with that. Um, and I think also it's worth mentioning the extensive IP protection that we have here. So it's kind of hard for them to penetrate the market now as well because we've got a lot of the IP wrapped up. Uh, uh, do, do you want me to handle the next one, Steve? Yeah, is that, is that the cancer one? Uh, no, it's um, what what does the next phase of trials look like okay, and, yep. and when can we expect to see the initial data from that? Um, so as, as Steve has um, uh, outlined and I've mentioned, um, we're entering into uh, uh, collaborations with very credible cancer research groups. One in particular uh, is a world leader. They've had recent papers in the highest scientific journal uh, in nature. Um, on cancer immunotherapy. Um, and so we'll do initial testing in uh, cancer cells grown uh, in vitro. These are cancer cells grown in uh, a Petri dish. Uh, and that allows us to get the first results on whether these new midkind targeted drugs, the uh, antisense oligonucleotides, will actually change cancer cell behavior grown in a Petri dish. And that's a way to essentially move on to the next phase, which is in vivo live uh, uh, experiments in which mice bearing tumours, um, which essentially uh, recapture the, the uh, process of resistance to immunotherapy. Um, and so we'll begin those experiments, in vitro experiments, uh, quite soon. Um, and uh, over the um, Q3 from the mid-year, from mid-year on, we'll start in vivo experiments, um, dosing mice with our midkind targeted oligonucleotides um, with, uh, in combination therapies, combination treatments with immunotherapy drugs such as Keytruda and Opdivo. Um, and this will really test whether we can improve the uh, response these, these particular models will have been selected because they don't respond very well to the uh, checkpoint inhibitors, checkpoint inhibitor blockade, which is the form of immunotherapy that midkind stops, um, pre prevents happening. So we'll uh, start those experiments mid-year on, and we would expect to start to see results from that in um, towards the end of Q3 and into Q4 uh, 2022. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's the style of experiment that, that, that we're heading for. 
Um, we will also do some uh, experiments in a brain cancer model. That's a continuation of the example that I uh, explained earlier in the presentation. Um, and that's with a very good group um, that looks at glioma, neuroblastoma, and various other very dangerous forms of brain cancer. Um, and so they're the two strands of um, work that we'll be doing in that next phase, testing the reagents. Thanks, Graham. Um, so another question is, the acquisition of Lyramid looks very credible. What funding is required to commercialise the first patients? And from a timing perspective, when is this likely to happen? So, um, yes, we, we, I agree. Yeah, the Lyramid acquisition, we're very excited about that. Um, and it's given us an opportunity to enter into a, a market with, with a novel disease target. So we're very excited by that. In terms of funding, so we are fully funded, as I said, up until um, getting the drug in, into the clinic in 2023. So I guess if we look at the, um, the, the fact that we're using utilising RNA therapeutic drugs rather than traditional antibody drugs, you can do it a lot quicker and cheaper. And I guess the question is, how cheap is it? So uh, we think, uh, based on the work we're doing, we can get a drug into clinic for around two million US dollars. Um, so we, we are fully funded for that. And keeping in mind that we also have a 42.5% cash rebate from the government as well. So if any surprises come up, we can also fund those those surprises as well. So um, yeah, the results to date are exciting and we look at delivering uh, further results, uh, which we're fully funded for. Uh, next question is, do you have any institutional shareholders and do management hold equity? No, we do not have any institutional shareholders yet. Uh, that is something we'll be working on this year. So uh, we'll be trying to link up with, uh, with industry specific brokers in order so we can penetrate the institutional market. Uh, and then in terms of management holding equity, yes, absolutely. So management holds about 12% of the company in shares. And in addition, there are uh, warrant packages in place as well with uh, strike prices sort of 15 to 20p in order to, uh, to incentivize staff and reward staff uh, as we deliver on milestones. Uh, there's a question here, uh, just to confirm your first program is targeting melanoma skin cancer in combination with immune checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, not quite. Uh, so we are, we are targeting tumours and uh, specifically uh, brain cancer tumours on, on the one hand. And then we are uh, targeting immune, uh, well, working alongside immune checkpoint inhibitors, so Im immunotherapy. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's our targets at the moment. Uh, sorry, just reading the next questions. Um, if I can just add around the melanoma um, skin cancer in combination with checkpoint inhibitors, that that is a focus. However, um, the, the link between midkine and altering the body's immune responses goes beyond just melanoma. Um, so uh, at the moment, the immune checkpoint inhibitors are really branching out in a whole lot of other tumour types um, and, and we'll definitely pursue them as well. Um, so the, the, these could be um, uh, colorectal cancer um, and other forms of cancer, lung cancer, so that we can really get a very broad base. While the focus is, is melanoma, that's not exclusively mel melanoma. Um, if I could just continue, there's a question from Colin um, just on um, what type of delivery vehicle is planned for the antisense oligonucleotides in the context of polar tumours. Um, so this is where working in with uh, Professor Wilton at Murdoch University is, is a great help for us um, because he essentially took from concept to patient um, the development of antisense oligonucleotides for Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, which involved having uh, a delivery vehicle attached to the, to, to the oligonucleotide. So that's a critical component of the whole strategy. And, and those delivery vehicles, um, uh, one of the first ones will try a so-called cell penetrating peptides, um, which have been shown to work in the context of Duchenne's. 
but we'll also consider uh, lipid nanoparticles. Um, and that is largely because um, of the um, great momentum that's built up around mRNA or RNA therapeutics generally, both oligonucleotides and mRNA, uh, based on the COVID vaccines, uh, mRNA vaccines, which are wrapped up in lipid nanoparticles. Um, so, so we'll consider both, but one of the front runners will be the cell penetrating peptides. Um, and that was followed, I think Colin had another question on that. No, can't find it. Sorry, I'll pass back to you, Stephen. Yeah, no, I think Colin just had another one to sort of, uh, which I think you've asked anyway, but just asking uh, about, I think it's, it's referring to a specific slide, which I think it's probably this one where we talk about um, delivery vehicle design. And yeah. it's, this slide is very simplistic. So I've actually uh, split that out as a separate milestone, but Colin's absolutely right. So the delivery vehicle design will, will be done in in conjunction with um, the in vivo testing. So they, they kind of go hand in hand with each other. So I think um, that's all their questions covered. Um, um, Stephen, Graham, thank you for that. I think you managed to address all those questions from investors. And of course, the company will review any further questions submitted and will publish those responses on the Invest Me company platform. But just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you both. Stephen, could I just ask you for a few closing comments? Yeah, sure. I mean, firstly, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, I think in terms of closing comments, I just really want to drive home the fact that we are a company with a very small market cap. My job, I see, is being trying to raise awareness uh, amongst our industry peers of what, what we're doing here. But also raising awareness amongst investors, and uh, and then I want to make sure we deliver on the milestones that we've set out here today, with the ultimate goal of delivering a cancer drug into clinic, which uh, inhibits mekine by 2023. And by doing that, we're going to unlock significant value along the way. We're going to be hitting lots of milestones along the way. I think, and I think the rest of the team is very excited about what we've done so far, and. We're very excited about the journey, journey forward. So thanks for your time. Stephen Graham, thanks for your time and thank you very much for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close the session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Rockport Therapeutics PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all. Thank you. Thank you.